a nice, that's a nice warm response. Hi, everyone. Oh, you got interviewed before. Don't act like you've never had a million people be <laughs> yeah. like, Orlando! <laughs> <laughs> like you haven't been hacked in as long as most of you people have been alive. <laughs> okay, so I just saw you jumping <laughs> out of a plane, out of a plane, out of a, out of a plane? Mm-hmm. You know you need your face for work, right? <laughs> Orlando well, Bloom, uh, Mr. Orlando Bloom, why are you jumping out of planes? <laughs> with a bat suit on? With a bat suit on. With yeah. a bat suit on. Like, you're a look, like, like a, a flying wombat. squirrel. A flying squirrel. You're out here jumping out of planes like flying squirrels with a parachute. Why, friend? Well, because I didn't get any takes on me doing like a longevity show where I would get to like, you know, meet people who live long and prosper. I kind of had that idea. It was like, Oh. I was COVID when, like, I felt really the palpable level of fear around me. Mm. I don't know about you, but I was like, if I get out of this, I want to do something that shows how people live in such a way that they could survive this, right? But, like I said, nobody bit on that, but they said, well, how about we throw you out of a plane? How about we throw you to the bottom of the ocean and up a mountain? So I was like, okay, that works. So you came up with an idea during uh, the Roni, as yeah. we like to call it, right. where uh, we were in a Panasonic, yeah. You know, and uh, you were like, man, I would love to talk to people about uh, just, you know, how do I become, you know, a person who lives to be 100 years old? Yeah. And then yeah. it, networks were like, nah, I don't nobody care about that. <laughs> yeah. But can't we see you risk your life? Is that what everyone was like? That's exactly what it was, yeah. Okay, and so don't you have children? <laughs> <laughs> If, you mock, if I'm Miss Katie Perry <laughs> um, and I got a baby at home, I'm like, sir, if you don't sit down, <laughs> um, what, why, for what? Oh, God love you. Yeah, she, uh, she's, she's amazing. Super, we both support each other immensely. But look, obviously, perhaps she didn't know exactly quite the lengths I'd be going to until <laughs> I kind of came home freaking out, sweating and going like, uh, that was real and a lot. Um, uh, but I think, you know, I, 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 I hope that, like, for me, it was like this was an opportunity to kind of get super capable, super focused. And actually, these remarkable athletes that taught me all these incredible things. You see, Luke Aitkins was the guy who taught me to, to, to wingsuit and Camila Javar was taught me to free dive with Will Treebridge. And then there was this amazing adaptive climber named Mo Beck, who was born with one hand and climbed exactly what I climbed. Like, these are people with an incredible skill set. Mm. And I kind of felt like, well, if I could learn, instead of being this, like, impulsive kid that I kind of always have been in, like, that was when I got into trouble, you know, like, flying around on my motorcycle thinking I could do anything, and then not knowing the protocols or not knowing exactly. It was like an education in becoming super present, super capable, and, and able to, like, push through what I think was, you know, an edge for me. Now, listen, for other people, their edge is a little different, <laughs> you know, but it was like, it wouldn't necessarily play on TV in the same way, right? <laughs> well, my edge is being a black woman in America, so... Well, there you go. Uh... You only have to step out the house, right? Listen, <laughs> I walk outside and I'm like, man, this is extreme. This is real. Lord, I hope I make it back tonight. Black Italy, <laughs> oh, I might meet Jesus before I cross the street. <laughs> so you went wing suited. Yeah. Rock climbing. Correct. Free diving. Yeah. yeah. Now I thought diving didn't cost any money. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually weird. What what is what is free diving? It's um so I basically swam to I ended up at about 102 feet, 37 meters. I guess it's like one tenth of the uh the Chrysler building. <laughs> or ten floors. Maybe you can think of it ten floors. I swam to ten floors on, on one breath. And, um, and down was... and back. So it was, it was it five down and five up, or was it ten down and ten, ten up? Ten down and ten up. Yeah. So it's like two hundred feet. Of yeah. Floor. Okay. Yeah. And um, so is free diving called that because it's free of air? Is that why? Because you don't have like a, a you, there's no snorkel, there's no no scuba. There's just it's just you it's just and you and your breath and the uh, and the great deep beyond. <laughs> wow. Pretty scary. I mean, it's a weird feeling because you're, you're literally like, you know, I mean, I'm not claustrophobic and I love the ocean, but there was a lot of technical stuff with like, you know, equalizing and I had a mask and I mean, you know, it was, it, it was challenging, but we, we got there and it was, and I only had like a, a week to kind of do that. I mean, I learned to, I learned to hold my breath. I, t I kept doing these techniques. So Camila, who was training me, taught me these breath routines and, and ways to sort of exhale 
you hold breath out to, mm -hmm. to build up this um, CO2, which is what you feel most uncomfortably when you're underwater. Mm. But, um, and then holding your breath for an extended period of time. I mean, it's, it is unnatural. <laughs> it's yeah. not something that, like, I definitely wouldn't recommend it uh, just to kind of go do that. Um, you know, um, but, but it was like, I think I got a lot from it. So you like so you learned Found a lot. Breath. So you learned a lot from this experience of always of almost not making it out of these experiences. <laughs> yeah. What do you felt like you learned in, the, in those places where you're, those moments where you're just like I'm like right on the, because like did you reach the ed was the edge death was that that <laughs> where the edge? I think it's was? close to it. I think I say in the show I never feel more alive when I'm as close to death, and I think that I had that feeling of. Um, you know, if, you, if you're in a really intense moment, a really mm -hmm. intense situation, and, and I had these incredible teachers, if I follow the protocol, if I just follow what I've learned, if I trust, if I let go, all of those ideas of like, be in rhythm, be in like, trust the universe, trust this is on my path, trust that like, I've learned everything, trust that Luke who taught me, for example, with the free diving that I was capable to wingsuit after 25 jumps, which is when I got my A license, so we're not sure. <laughs> We're not sure anyone really has done it at, on the 26th jump, wingsuiting, because it's a particularly uh, terrifying kind of experience when you don't have a huge amount of experience. But, uh, yo! Um, but um, <laughs> but I, I kind of had... Um, I felt like being present, really present, and maybe that's something that I'll take back. Hopefully that's something that I am taking back to my family, like being more present, more grateful, more like appreciative of life, I guess. That's amazing. Because the idea of being more present um, is a thing that's always... Pr I mean, it's, we're here, I'm a present, you're welcome. <laughs> but, uh, but I guess the idea, because, like, you're how did gift. you... You're a gift. Look at God. Thank you so yeah. much. And if you have any nice friends that want to meet me, we, you know, we can talk about that later, Mr. Bloom. Um, but I do wonder, like, was there anything that got you... I guess, like, being in those moments, it feels like it's probably, like, a very spiritual experience when you're that close to just... Yeah, so I, I yeah, definitely when you're that close to death. And I, I've had this Buddhist practice in my life since I'm 16, so I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which has been a really wonderful philosophy in my life and something mm. like kind of an anchor for me, really. So I, I, I actually, you see me chant a little bit of that, and it's something that um, I would say helped me to deal with the voices in my head telling me that I was insane. Um, or that I might die, you know? That's survival, sir. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, yeah. that's your body going, breathe. Yeah, breathe, yeah, exactly. Breathe, breathe bro. Well, it should, which, by the way, when you're doing that, you are breathing. But um, I think, you know, in a way, yeah, it's, it, it, it was very focusing and grounding and because and, and, you're in, like, these hyper-tense situations. I liked it. It helped. I'll use it again. I use it now. <laughs> you're an actor who's been a part of huge franchises. Yeah. Lord um, of the Rings, The yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. but like this is a docu series. So there's no cuz like I'm also a trained actor. When I started doing stand up it scared me. Because right. I'd never been on stage and it wasn't me being a character, bringing right. someone else to life and there were someone else's words. So how did it feel to be on camera but you weren't playing yeah. Someone else, and you were very being very true to yourself and presenting yourself. And on kind screen. of vulnerable and terrified. Yes, yeah. it was a lot. Um, to be honest, I'd never thought of doing anything like this. Uh, you know, I wasn't thinking I want to do an unscripted show and I want to do some kind of action adventure thing. It wasn't in my in my thinking. It just was something that became part of my journey, which I'm grateful for. But it was like definitely. I was, I had a certain amount of like, am I going to say something really silly um, all the time or just part of the time? Am I going to, am I going to uh, sound like I know anything about anything, you know? Um, so that was, that was, that was also, I think, a massive, I'm, I'm grateful for that question, it was a massive part of the equation because whilst doing these insane things was insane and challenging, like overcoming some of the things in my mind that prevented me from even thinking anything I had to say was going to work for an unscripted show, because as you point out so right. rightly, I've worked on some great characters and, and great writers, and when you have a dialogue, you know, from a character that's been written out, it's, there's, there's, there's choices that you make, but when you're just riffing, it's like, as you know, right. like, you can't really, you know, like, is that going to work? Am I going to say anything interesting here? <laughs> um, so it was, yeah, that was another element to it that I kind of had to sort of learn to embrace. Well, that's amazing. I'm so excited for you for this project. Thanks. I hope you like it. I, I would love it. I would love to watch you. I'm glad you're I would love to watch you.